بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the first lesson of the video series Arabic Grammar for Understanding the Quran Now in this first lesson we're going to be taking a look at three different subtopics uh, First we will begin with a very general background introduction to the Arabic word So we'll be discussing uh, things like the characteristics and the traits of Arabic words and then we'll move on to topic number two which is the adjective or sifa in Arabic and last but not least we will be taking a look at the plural and the different types of plurals in Arabic and the word for plural is al jamar so let's begin inshallah with the first topic all Arabic words are classified into three different types so if you take an Arabic word it's going to fall under one of these three categories. It's either going to be an ism, a fi'l, or a harf. Ismun, fi'lun, wa harfun. What's an ism? An ism is a noun or a pronoun. So all nouns or pronouns fall under this category of ism. A fi'l is a verb. Now this includes verbs of all different conjugations and tenses. And this will also include verbs that are in the interrogative or the command form. So basically, any type of verb in Arabic, regardless of conjugation or tense, uh, will fall under this category. And lastly, we have the group harf. Now, the best translation is a particle, uh, even though this word is kind of obscure. But just know for now that a harf, uh, this group includes most English prepositions. So things like from, to, um, with, things like that, about will fall under this category of harf and we will discuss these two groups in a lot of detail in the upcoming lessons but in this lesson we will hone in and focus on the ism uh, not so much pronouns but just nouns in general so the ism the plural of which is asma has four essential qualities these are four very basic and fundamental characteristics of the ism and they are gender number case ending and definiteness. For clarification, case ending is not exclusive to the ism. All Arabic words have case endings and we will learn later on that verbs have case endings as well. But um, for now, whenever you see an ism, uh, whenever you see a noun appear, I want you to think about these four qualities. What's the gender of the word? Um, what's number? What's the case ending? And what's its definiteness? meaning is it definite or indefinite, but we'll get to this in a bit. Let's talk about gender for now. So all asma in Arabic have gender. Each ism, whether it's a person, place, or thing, is considered masculine or feminine. The Arabic word for masculine is mudhakkar, and the word for feminine is mu'annath. Now in English, gender is typically not ascribed to things that are dead and inanimate. So we don't call things uh, like books, rocks, and cars male or female. You don't typically say in English, I picked up a rock, he was heavy, or she was heavy. Uh, we don't say things like that. But in Arabic, everything is either masculine or feminine. If you can name it, it has a gender. So these things, books, rocks, and cars in Arabic, do have a gender. Uh, let's discuss gender in a bo bit more detail. Let's take the word Muslim, which is, you know, a male adherent or a follower of the Islamic faith and if you add a tamar buta to the end of the word Muslim we get Muslimah, Muslimah which is the female version of a Muslim namely a female follower of the Islamic faith a second word Mu'min which means a male believer if we do the same transformation the same modification by adding a tamar buta to the end we get Mu'minah, Mu'minah which is a female believer. Whoops. Okay. And then last but not least, we have the word zawj, which means husband in Arabic. If we add a tamar buta to the end, we get zawjah, which means wife, the female version um, of this word. So what do we notice? We notice that the tamar buta at the end of these words makes these words feminine, basically. And we can convert the masculine version of the word into its feminine counterpart or feminine form by adding a tamar buta to the end. Now, this 
isn't always the case. Many words in Arabic do not have a masculine or feminine counterpart. Take, for example, the word qamar, which means moon. This is masculine. Um, you might think that the opposite is sun. So if we add tamar buta to get qamarah, that should mean sun, which is feminine. That's not the case. The word for sun is ashams, which is an entirely different word. Uh, for example, the word sa'ah, which means time or hour, is feminine. But you can't drop the Tamar Bulta to get the masculine counterpart. That just doesn't exist. So these words appear and exist by themselves and they have a fixed gender. Some masculine feminine pairs are composed of entirely different words. Um, for example, the word Walad, which means boy, has the opposite, uh, namely girl or bint in Arabic. But notice how we did not add a Tamar Bulta to Walad to get Waladah. It's just bint. And not all feminine words have a tamar buta. Some are feminine by their meaning. Again, the word bint does not have a tamar buta at the end. But it is feminine because we understand that the word uh, is feminine by meaning. Next, we're going to take a look at number. Each ism in Arabic is numbered and can be singular, dual, or plural. Singular or mufrad uh, refers to one, one copy or one... Uh, instance, one version of something. The dual is two of something, and the plural, of course, is three or more. So here we have the word kitab, which means book. Specifically, it means one book. The dual version is kitabani or kitabaini. So we're taking the singular form and we're adding ani or aini. Ani or aini. Kitabani, which means two books, and kitabaini, which also means two books. Now, what's the difference between these two words? The difference is that they have different case endings. So they both mean two books, but they have different grammatical values and functions. And we will talk about this in more detail. But for now, I would encourage you to try to train your ears to listen for these phonetic changes. Ani and aini usually refer to the dual version of a particular thing. And then, of course, we have three or more, which is kutub. So, kitab is one book, kitabani, kitabaini, two books, and the plural, three or more, is kutub. The dual does not exist in the English language, um, so this is a very unique aspect of al Arabiya of Arabic. Let's take a look at the third quality, which is case ending. Each ism in Arabic occurring in an Arabic sentence has a specific case. Uh, which is basically a variable changing in its ending, a variable change in its ending that is dictated by its function in the sentence. And this ending also reflects uh, the function in the sentence. So what does that mean? Basically, a case ending is a change in the ending that tells us something about that word's role in a sentence. And in actuality, all words, not just a sma in Arabic have case endings. Arabic grammar is pretty much case ending analysis or i'rab. Uh, Arabic grammar answers such questions as for instance when do we use kitabani, when do we use kitabaini. And i'rab is a very extensive and detailed and technical science or discipline. But inshallah um, gradually we will explore a great deal of it in the upcoming lessons. Now, you might still be a little confused and not too sure what a case ending means. Let's consider a few examples. We have the words Muslimun, Muslimun, Musliman, and Muslimin. All three words mean Muslim, but notice how the endings are different. We have Adhammatan over here, Fathatan over here, and Akasratan down here. The word yaktub, which means he writes or he is writing, is a verb. And we can have, again, three different versions. We can have yaktubu, yaktuba, and yaktub. Again, notice how the endings are different. We have a dhamma, a fatha, and a sukun. And lastly, we have the words muslimuna and muslimina. Both words mean Muslims, but the first one, the first version, has a waw. And the second one has a yeah. Okay, what's going on here? 
We see this in the Quran all the time. The words in each set have the same meaning, but each word has a different grammatical value and role, and that's what the case ending tells us. Again, Arabic grammar answers such questions as when is it appropriate for us to say Muslimun, when do we say Musliman, and when do we say Muslimin. Uh, and in each particular sentence, there is only one correct answer. Um, it's either Yaktubu or Yaktuba or Yaktub. Um, again, even though all three words have the same me meaning, they have different grammatical roles. They play a different function in a sentence. And that's basically the gist of case ending analysis or Arab. Again, it's a very detailed science, um, but we will inshallah address all of these issues uh, in future lessons. Let's talk about the fourth and last quality of asma in Arabic. Each ism is either definite or indefinite. So the Arabic word for definite is ma'rifa. When I say something is definite, I mean it is specified. We're talking about a, a specific, uh, specific item or specific thing. So if I say the book, right, just like in English, when I say the book, you and I know we're talking about a particular book. If I say the book is on the table, um, you know, out of all the books in the world, out of millions and millions of books, there is just one book that I am referring to. On the other hand, if a noun is indefinite or nakirah, it is unspecified. When I say a book, I'm talking about any book. Over here, we have three nouns, all of which are definite. We have al-muslimu, al-muslima, and al-muslimi. Just as a reminder, the case endings are different, but we're not going to worry about that for now. All three nouns mean the Muslim. Notice how we have an alif lam in front of the word. Al-Muslimu, Al-Muslima, and Al-Muslimi. This alif lam is what makes the word definite. We can convert all of these words into their indefinite forms by dropping the alif lam and adding a tanween. So Al-Muslimu becomes Muslimun, Al-Muslima becomes Musliman, and Al-Muslimi becomes Muslimin. And these words now mean a Muslim, any Muslim. And the Tanwins are highlighted here. So, take home lessons. All Asma with the Alif Lam in front are definite. So if you see an Ism with the Alif Lam in front, you should immediately remember that it is definite and specified. All asma except proper nouns or names that take a tanween are indefinite. You can ignore this the stipulation for now. Basically, all most asma that take a tanween at the end are indefinite. And of course, an ism cannot take both a tanween and an alif lam. Now there are other categories of asma that are considered definite or ma'rifa. These include alam, uh, which are proper names. Al-Dhamair, uh, which are pronouns, Ism al ishara Wal Ism al mausul the demonstrative and the relative pronoun, and the Mundaf, which I'm not too sure how to translate. Uh, anyway, don't worry about these for now, okay? We are going to talk about each of these in more detail later on. For now, just remember that an Ism with an Alif Lam in front is Ma'rifa. Okay, at this point, we are going to review um, the four different qualities of asma that we have discussed just a moment ago, namely gender, definiteness, number, and case. So let's look at a very short verse from the Quran. In verse number two of Surah Al-Alaq, Allah says, Let's focus on the two um, asma that we have, Al-Insana, and alaqin al insana and alaqin so the word al insana again you hear the al in front that tells you the word whoops that tells you the word is ma'rifa or definite the word is also mudhakkar which means it's masculine it is mufrad or singular and regarding its case ending which we know nothing about at this point but we can just say it takes a fatha at the end al insana the word alaqin we hear the tanween, we know that it is indefinite or nakira. The word is mudhakar as well, masculine. 
uh, regarding its number, it is mufrad, and regarding its case, it takes a kasra at the bottom. Let's take a look at a second example. This is um, a segment taken from the middle of verse 35 in Surah An-Nur. Let's focus on the words highlighted here. Al-Misbahu, Zujajatin, Al-Zujajatu, Kawkabun, and Shajaratin. Al-Misbahu, we hear the Al, we know it is Ma'rifah. The word is Mudhakar, Mufrad, and takes a Dhamma. Next word, Zujajatin, we hear the Tanween, we know it is indefinite. Now notice how the word has a Tamar Buta. This tells us the word is Mu'annath, or feminine. It is Mufrad singular and takes a kasra. Az-Zujajatu has the Alif Lam, making it Ma'rifah. It has a Tamar Buta, which makes it Mu'annath. Mufrad singular takes a Dhamma. Kawkabun, we hear the Tanween, making the word Nakirah. It is Mudhakkar, masculine, Mufrad singular, and takes a Dhamma. Shajaratin has a Tamar Buta, so the gender is feminine, Mu'annath. It is Nakirah. Because the marking is a tanween, it is mufrad singular, and it takes a kasra for its case ending. So at this point, um, you should be quite comfortable and familiar with these four different qualities. And every time you look at an ism uh, in the Quran, you should think about its gender, whether it's definite or indefinite. Is it singular, plural, or dual? And what's the case ending it takes? Moving on to topic number two, the plural or al jamr Plurals in Arabic are of three different types. Uh, in other words, every single plural you will encounter will fall under one of these three categories. Number one, we have the broken plural, jamr taksir Next, you have the sound masculine plural, jamr al-mudhakir as-salim. And lastly, you have the sound feminine plural, jamr al-mu'annath as-salim. You should know these words by now, al-mudhakir is masculine, mu'annath is feminine, and salim means sound, uh, something that is intact, that is unbroken and sound. So let's begin with the first type of plural, which is the broken plural, jama' taksir. Forming this plural requires breaking apart the singular form, requires dismantling the singular, and then adding in and changing stuff, so modifying it in very strange, uh, so-called strange ways. Strange in my opinion, at least. Let's like, take a look at a few examples here. We have bait, which means house. The plural becomes buyut. So we have a very random wo thrown in there. And we've also changed the vowels on the ba and the ya uh, to two dhammas. Next, we have the word asimah, which means capital. Again, the plural becomes awasim. This is broken because we've split apart the word, we've thrown in a well, we've dropped the term of the Yeah, we've inserted the well right between the ayn and the alif. Last but not least, we have the word kitab, which means book. The plural becomes kutub. We have dropped the alif and also changed the short vowel markings on the kaf and the So, in summary, these plurals are considered broken because we had to change the singular form in very fundamental ways, oftentimes breaking up the word and modifying uh, the vowels. Although patterns for these plurals do exist, broken plurals must be memorized when you learn the singular form. So the way I learned it was bait buyut, asima arwalsim, kitab kutub. And that's really the only way to go about it. Next, we have category number two, the sound masculine plural, or jama' al mudakir salim. To form this type of plural, simply add una or ina to the singular. Una or ina. These words are human and masculine in meaning. Let's take three examples. We have muslimun, which is one male believer of the Islamic faith. Mufrad. To make the jama' or the plural, we add una or ina to the end. So we get Muslimuna or Muslimina. Now, again, how are these words different? They both mean Muslims. They're both the plural of Muslim. The difference is in the case ending, which we will not worry about for now. 
So just learn the two forms, Muslimuna, Muslimina, both mean Muslims. Example number two, we have the word Fasiq, which means sinful or immoral, someone who is sinful or immoral. To make it the plural form, we add Una or Ina, Fasiquna, Fasiqina, which means um, men who are sinful or immoral. Lastly, we have Lalim, a male individual who's unjust or a male oppressor. To get the plural, again, we do the same modification. We add una or ina. We get volimuna and volimina. These are sound because the singular remains intact. Notice how the word Muslim still appears in the plural. The word fasiq appears and the word volim appears. We are only making very simple changes to the ending, adding una or ina. And the last type of plural is called the feminine, sound feminine plural, Jama'a Mu'annat al Salim. To form this, we simply drop the Tamar Bulta at the end of the feminine word of the feminine singular and we add at to the singular. We add at, which is an alif and a ta. These words are feminine but not necessarily human. Let's take a look at a few examples. We have Muslimah, Muslimah which is a single female believer of the Islamic faith. If we drop the Tamar Buta and add at to the end, we get Muslimat, Muslimat. We have the word Muhsana, which is a chaste woman. Again, dropping the Tamar Buta and adding at, we get Muhsanat, Muhsanat. And then this last example is a non-human example. We have the word ayah, which means a sign or a verse in the Quran. Dropping the tamar buta and adding at gives us ayat, ayat. These are sound again, just like the sound masculine plurals, because the singular form remains intact, pretty much, except for the tamar buta being dropped off. Uh, everything else in the singular appears in the plural. We are only making very simple changes to the ending, adding at. Some feminine words that end in tamar buta have broken plurals, so watch out. Uh, for example, the word surah, the plural is suwar. This is broken. It is not surat. So pay attention to these um, and make sure to memorize this. Now let's take a look at some examples from the Qur'an to review the plurals. So over here we have a number of plurals taken from various different verses in the Qur'an. We are going to talk about the type of plural, the category it falls under, and then the singular form. So in verse number 1 of Surat Al-Kafirun 109, Allah says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ the plural is kafirun, disbelievers. We hear the un that tells us it's a sound masculine plural. Jamar al mudakir al salim. It's easy for us to figure out the singular. You just drop the un at the end to give the kafir. In verse number one of surah number 105, um, Allah says, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al fil. Ashab means companions. This is an example of a jam'a taqsir, a broken plural. The singular is sahib. In verse number 2 of surah number 102, at we have حَتَّى uh, زُرْتُمُ maqabir, which means graves. This is again another example of a jam'a taqsir, a broken plural. The singular is maqbar. In surah number 16, verse 44, this is surah nahl I believe. We have the verse Bil Bayinat wa Zubur Al Bayinat. We hear the at that tells us it's a Jama' al Mu'annat al Salim, a sound feminine plural. And to recover the singular, we drop the Alif Nata and we add Tamar Bulta to get Al Bayina. Al Bayina. Uh, in the next verse, the same surah, we have As Sayyat. Sayyat. Same deal here. It's a Jama' al Mu'annat al Salim. And the singular is as sayyah. In surah number 24, verse 27, we have buyut. This is an example of a jama' taqsir. The singular is bayt. 
And then the last four examples come from the last ayah of Surah Al Ahzab, where Allah says, لِيُعَذِّبَ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكَاتِ We have al-munafiqina. We hear the ina. This tells us the word is a jama' with that salim, a sound masculine plural. And the singular form is al-munafiq, just the front part. Al-munafiqati is a jama' mu'anath salim. Singular is al-munafiqah. Al-munafiqah. And then we have al-mushrikina. Jama' al mudakir salim. Al-mushrik. And last but not least, we have al-mushrikat, which is Jama' al Mu'anath al Salim, the singular is, is Al Mushrikah. So Al Munafiqina is the male hypocrites, Al Munafiqat, the female hypocrites, Al Mushrikina, the male polytheists, and Al Mushrikat, the female polytheists. Okay, this is the last subject for today in this lesson is Al Sifa. The Sifa is a modifier that follows the ism it describes. And it agrees with the ism in four fundamental ways. And they are case, number, definiteness, and gender. Now, it's not a coincidence that I chose to talk about these four characteristics uh, just a few moments ago. Because in order to understand the sifa, we must understand agreement on four different levels. On these four different levels. So let's take an example. We have the phrase, Al-Hukumatu Al-Jadidatu. Al-Hukumatu Al-Jadidatu al hukuma means the government Al-Jadida means the new, the new government Let's pay attention to these four different traits We have Al in front of both words In front of the Ism and the Sifa Telling us that both are definite We have a Talmud and at the end of the Sif, uh, At the end of the Ism and the Sifa Both are feminine, Mu'annath We have the same case ending on both words Adhamma and both are singular. So here it is. Both are feminine, definite, singular, and both take dhammas. There is agreement in these four different regards. Example number two, we have the phrase rajulin bakhilin, which means stingy man. Again, we have agreement in the gender. Both are masculine. Both are indefinite with the tanween. Both are singular and both take a kasra. Now, I want to bring your attention to one um, very important observation, and that is to call the modifier al sifa in Arabic grammar, we must must have the following form. And the form is a big house, okay, where the adjective is strung to the noun. The ism and the sifa are together in this particular structure. The Arabic equivalent would be baytun kabirun, a big house. Baytun is the mausuf. That's the thing being modified or described. Asifa is the adjective, the descript descriptor. Again, we have to have this form, Baytun Kabirun, in order for us to call Kabirun Asifa. We can have other forms, okay? If we have other forms, the adjective is Asifa in a general sense, but not Asifa in the grammatical sense. Okay, consider these two forms. We have the house is big and the house was big. There's actually a difference between these two sentences and this phrase up here. We call big asifa in this case, but not in these two cases. And that's true because the Arabic equivalents of these two sentences are here. We have al-baytu kabirun, the house is big, or kan al-baytu kabirun, the house was big. Notice how over here we don't have agreement in definiteness and over here we don't have agreement in definiteness or case ending and that's because kabirun in these cases carry different grammatical values okay so we don't call kabir the sifa in this case we actually call it uh, the khabar and over here it's called the khabar kana both of which, which we will discuss later on but just remember an adjective is a sifa in Arabic grammar only if you follow this pattern baytun kabirun now let's review the adjective or the sifa by taking examples from the Quran and I want you to pay attention to agreement again in these four fundamental aspects in case definiteness number and gender in surat an nur verse number 35 we have the phrase shajaratin mubarakatin 
a blessed uh, tree. Shajaratin mubarakatin. Gender. Both of these words, the ism and the sifa, are feminine. Mu'annaf. We are talking about uh, mufrad or singular. And both are indefinite because of the tanween. Both are nakirah. And the case ending both, notice how both take a kasratan, a kasra at the bottom. Example number two, we have from Surah Ibrahim, Surah number 14, verse number two, the phrase, Adabin Shadid, Adabin Shadidin. When we recite this verse, it's, uh, We end on a sukun. But if you look carefully, you will see that there is um, this short vowel on the bottom, which is not read because when you stop, you stop on a sukun. Anyway, both of these words are mudakar masculine, both are singular mufrad, both are indefinite nakirah, the tanween, and then both take the same case, which is the kasra. In Surah Nahl, Surah number 16, verse number 67, we have the phrase rizqan hasanan, rizqan hasanan. Both are mudakar, mufrad, nakirah, and both take a fatha. Uh, example number four in Surah Atin. وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ We have الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ Both are mudakar, both are mufrad, both are nakirah, uh, sorry, both are ma'rifah, because the other lam in front, making both words definite, and both take the same case ending, namely, a kasra. Lastly, we have kalimatin khabithatin, kalimatin khabithatin, both are mu'annaf, feminine, because of the tamar rabuta, both are singular mufrad, both are nakira, indefinite, and both take the same case ending, a kasra. So that brings us to the end of lesson number one. Here is a quick review. Every Arabic word is either an ism, a noun or a pronoun, a fi'l, a verb, or a harf, a particle. Every ism is either definite, ma'rifa, or indefinite, nakira. Every ism is also either mudakar, masculine, or mu'anna, feminine. And also, Every ism is numbered. It can be singular, mufrad, dual, muthanna, or plural, jama. Arabic words have case endings, and these case endings tell us something about their functions in the context of sentences. Plurals fall under one of um, these three categories. They can be jama' taksir, broken, jama' al mudakir salim, sound masculine, or jama' al muannath al salim, sound feminine. Lastly, in the phrase baytun kabirun, the sifa, which is kabirun, agrees with the mausuf, bait, indefiniteness, gender, number, and case. This is the end of the first lesson. Thank you for watching.